three, two, one. We have commit and we have liftoff at 213. The Saturn V building up to 7.6 million pounds of thrust and it is clear of the tower. the Anero Media Studios in South Central Georgia, this is the Don and Randy Show. Okay, what is today? Today is Thursday. Hump day! No, oh, that I'm was, sorry. That was, that was yesterday. <laughs> That's habit. Yeah, that was yesterday. That that was yesterday, and of course, that's actually like one of those memes. Have you seen that meme with the um, with the camel? That what? The meme. You know what a meme is, right? I have no clue. A meme. Okay, on the internet, whenever you see like these these uh, pictures or sayings or what have you, and they've got like a picture and it, like the seckies, you know, there's a lot of those around. And so, oh, you know, oh, oh, those are called memes. Memes. Yeah. The hell does that mean? I mean, it's what does that mean? I'm sorry. Corny really? joke number one. Corny joke number we one. We are officially what a minute and a half in. Yep, yep. Yeah. It's a meme. Well, the, this particular meme was a picture of you know Miley Cyrus bent over from the VMAs <laughs> and the camel from the hump day <laughs> right behind her. <laughs> oh. Oh, so uh, anyway, we got we, since we've started off that way. Uh, this is another episode of the Don and Randy Show. Uh, I am your co-host uh, Donovan, and uh, that dude over there is uh, Randy. Hola. And uh, this is a show where we basically talk about absolutely nothing and get away with it. It's a show about nothing. Yeah, it sounds very, very familiar. Word. Word. Well, we do have a call in line. It's two two nine five one eight. Eleven thirty-two. That is two two nine five one eight one one three two. If you want to call in and talk about anything that we're talking about, or tired of anything we're talking about, yeah, tired of anything that we're talking about, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You know, I'm watching these camera, the the video up here. I was having this problem a little while ago. It's like my camera is lagging. That's going to be interesting if it jacks a recording up. Oh well, camera on you is fine. Well, I mean, but, you know, whenever I do this, like this is like, I'm easy to work with. Yeah, I hear you. It's like a half a second behind. <laughs> it's like I am waving now. <laughs> yeah, it's it's all screwed up. I'm sure you're you were a mastermind and you will figure it out. Well, you know what they say. I mean, it's it's like Murphy's Law. Anything that can go <clears> wrong <throat> will go wrong. Exactly. And usually so, happens. I don't know why it's doing it. So what's up with the hyenas tonight? Have you? Uh, I only see one in there. I don't know I, I, how to look at all this stuff either. So no, we got one more that just came in. Okay, the uh, the cham. If you the <laughs> cham four, I know who that is. So, okay. uh, but, and I know who the other other person is too. The, okay. Oh nuts! Anyway, maybe I need to. Uh, is look. the camera too look? But doom doom. <laughs> oh wait a minute! Uh, we need the. Uh, you know, I gotta get I gotta get a little more coordinated some days. Anyway, that's a delayed rim shot. You blame it on your lag. Up there. Yeah, it's it's my lag up there. Well, good. What's been going on with you this week, sir? Well, I learned something this week. What you learned? I learned what twerking was. <laughs> oh God! Here we go. <laughs> also known as dirty dancing. Okay. Twerk it's, a little something. It's when a woman slams her bottom on a man's pelvic area while dancing. And the man can also lunge his pelvic area forward for a harder bang. That's called um, hump day. Yeah. yeah. Usually performed in a dance club along with upbeat music. Examples. <laughs> Damn, her ass was twerking on my junk. I hope she didn't feel my schlong. Or... I saw hold you. Oh no! Hold on! <laughs> you can't use the word "schlong" with twerking. I'm telling you, that is not in the Urban Dictionary. That is illegal. Actually, this is where this comes from. This really? is really, yeah, yeah. And the other one was, I saw you twerking with that girl. That ass was bouncing all over you. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! So yeah, that uh, 
That's actually from the Urban Dictionary. Oh, that's funny. So the the world the world was introduced or reintroduced to the term twerking. Well, here's Sunday. here's what I find mm-hmm. so funny about this. As I as I had a conversation with my oldest son, uh, I think it was sometime this week. Yeah, it was because it was either Monday or Tuesday after the VMAs, because the VMAs were on Sunday. Mm-hmm. And I told him, I said, son, here's what's funny. I had never even heard the term twerking until that Miley Cyrus video came out, where they were like, oh, that girl be twerking in that video. And I'm like, what the fuck is twerking? So then when I watched the video, and I'm like, where's the twerking? And then I realized what they were talking about was the same shit that black chicks have been doing in rap videos for 20 freaking years. Yeah. And and his response is, uh, you know, basically, well, good for you, Dad. You're a little late. And I'm like, no, it's not that I'm late. It's essentially what they've done is they've taken a move that has been around for years and decided to give it some cool, funky ass name. Now I did see I did see something that kind of explains where that could come from. Think about this, you know, when you got. You got girls out there and they're dancing and all this kind of stuff, and you got your choreographer out there. And what do they say? You got to work it. You got to work it. So you'd blend them together and you got to twerk it. You got to twerk it. You get it? You with me? That's kind of racist, is it not? Why is it? How's that racist? I don't know. I'm, I'm just trying to start some shit. <laughs> I will come across this damn. <laughs> you know me. I'm trying to start some shit up. <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know where it came from. Um, she she needs to leave it to the black girls to twerk. Now, that may be racist, but it is what it is. Well, you know what's sad is she doesn't have the ass to twerk. No. That's what I said. I said, who in the hell said, girl, you look good. You need to go on out there. And whoever it was needs to be fired. And MTV, oh, needs, to be, well, MTV needs to be shut down for several reasons. That's just one of them. But uh, they, uh, that was, I mean, really, I felt bad for Robin Thicke. The, the singer who was out there with him because I don't feel bad. <laughs> I don't really care for him anyway. I, I just can't see him being out there in, um, <clears throat> say hey, rehearsal hey. <laughs> in, in rehearsal and be like, that girl right there is twerking it. And you know who his daddy is, right? Yeah. Alan, Alan Thick and yeah. Gloria Loring. He used to be on another world. It's his mother. And so it's just, I don't know, man. It's, it's disturbing. Poor, poor Billy Ray. His achy breaky heart. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was awful. You know, uh, that actually reminds me. A friend of mine at work said, well, you remember the Achy Breaky Heart song? We were like, yeah. He said, well, he wasn't actually talking about a girlfriend or anything. This was kind of like foreshadowing about his daughter. And I <laughs> yeah. was like, oh, that's terrible. <clears throat> that's that's terrible. true. It's true. Sad but true. All right. I want to find, uh, just bear with me a second. Um, dum, dum, Why, dum, certainly. Dum. do 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 she was just acting like overdoped, low rent trash. Oh, is that what it was? I don't, man. I, I've been around some drugs. I've seen some things, and hold on, I'm a little disturbed that you've got <laughs> Andrew Garfield as your backdrop there on your computer screen. Uh, that's no, that's yeah, not that's mine. you, dude. No, Whatever. that's no, no, no. <laughs> that's this Twitter page I happen to be at. Okay, look at that. Now, I did see that that picture right there. You, okay. Are you putting that up? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I will never eat chicken again. <laughs> Is it up? I'm, did I ruin it? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to spoil no, it. No, 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 <clears throat> no. Um, anyway, uh, for those uh, watching the video stream, that's a, that's a comparison of Miley Cyrus's ass and uh, a chicken spread out. Kind of. Anyway. <laughs> well, what can I say? Now yeah, that's uh, horrendous. Here's the uh, somewhat asinine. You know, if I could remember which direction, I was going to show you the. Uh, show me what you're twerking with. <laughs> oh yeah, I hear you. Oh my. Okay, see that that that's the other one I was talking about. <laughs> oh my god, Becky. Anyway. Corner hoes are classier. <laughs> uh, you tell them, Rev Lee. 
So anyway, that's um, that's been the news for the week. Is she's, I, I think she just, I don't know. Like I said, who, who said? Yeah, that, that's it. That's what you need. That's. I don't know. I mean, she, she made a video a couple of years ago, which even then some people were like. That's that. That's a little risque for her, and I forget the name of it. But I thought it was tastefully done, and it was it was artsy fartsy. Yeah, she was in like a bird cage and yeah, all of that. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. And one. I was like, okay, that, I was that's like, what's the fuss about? Yeah, uh, and then you see this video that she did with this, and it's teddy bears and the the grill thing, and 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 I mean, I mean, what what's wrong with her tongue? Can she not keep it in her mouth? I mean, is she looking to wrap it around something? I mean, I'm I'm not understanding. Oh. I mean, is she trying to reach the top of her head? Those little th- things that I mean, honestly. Yeah, she'll never go hungry. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's. I don't know. It's <clears throat> sad, she's, sad, sad, sad. <clears throat> what's bad is she's. I mean, I'm not a big fan of her music, but I mean, she's talented. I'll give her that. She acts. She can act pretty good. I mean, she's okay. Yeah. It was like the chat room just said, the hyena said, Gene Simmons ain't got shit on her. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, I have to admit, she does look a little better than Gene Simmons, so. Oh, goodness. Ugh. Yeah. Ugh. Anyway. But I don't know if I wouldn't rather have Gene than uh, Miley Cyrus at this point. i take Gene's wife. What's her name? Um, Shannon uh, yeah. Tweed. Yeah. I'd tweet anyway. <laughs> I'd twerk the tweed. <laughs> show me what you're tweeting with. Oh, God. Maybe that's a show title. <laughs> I don't know. Ooh. Does that make sense anyway? Oh, goodness. Yeah. Um, I got all my lights on in here. <laughs> the lights are on, but nobody's home. Yeah, no shit. Mm. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, I'm backing away. I'm backing away. <laughs> I swear, Ossifer, I didn't didn't touch her. She told <laughs> I'm gonna get in trouble. Later. Yeah. <laughs> oh. I hope I put my mic back properly. Uh, it's close enough. It's close <clears throat> enough for government work. Ed Zachary. So. All right. Well, let's get let's get off Miley and uh, on to some government bullshit. All right. Another one of my favorite people. Jesse Jackson. <laughs> Jesse. But, but not Reverend Jesse Jackson. This would be convicted Congressman Jesse <laughs> Jackson Jr. Now, where this... I actually had a, a, a Facebook friend of mine tell me about this story. And she's got a little backstory. The reason why she was a little pissed about this, and she sent it to me in a message, and she said, this might be some fodder for the show. All right, do you know anything about Jesse Jackson Jr.? I mean, he was... The, he was His in, daddy is Jesse Jackson? Yeah, there you go. Shit, I'm on it, buddy. All right. Well, apparently, he was indicted for misappropriation of some kind of funds or something <clears throat> like that. I don't know the exact details of what he did, but he was convicted. Right. Okay, so he was convicted, and <clears throat> then it seems that just by happenstance, he might be a little loony. Or as they're calling it, he is suffering from a mood disorder. Okay? Yeah, it's you, called my ass is about to get locked up. All right. Yeah, he's going to jail for two and a half years. All right? But he's suffering from a mood disorder. Now, this son of a bitch has been in Congress for 17 years. So he's already going to get a partial federal pension of $45,000 a year. He's also getting $8,700 a month in disability. Hold on now. I need, I mean, I need to clear $8,700 a month for disability? Correct. So by being a moron, you can get $8,700? No, actually, for being... Because I doubly qualify and... For being the son of the Reverend Jesse Jackson, who apparently can grease some palms and, and get some shit done... You can have someone state that your son is uh, suffering from a mood disorder, and now he qualifies for disability. 
So, yes, he's getting $8,700 a month. What doctor is he advising? Is it the I, I, uh, Michael Jackson doctor? I don't know, but I want his number. <laughs> yeah, no Because, I, I mean, I, I, I'm suffering from mental anguish from, you know, a year and a few months ago. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, um, <clears throat> someone in the comments put it this way. $8,700 a month plus, uh, wait a minute, $8,700 a month amounts to $104,400 per year for disability. All right, who in their damn Right mind thinks $8,700 a month. I, I, uh, anyway. Who can live off that? I understand what you're saying. Yeah, I know, right? I mean, yeah. it's... Uh, anyhow, um, combined with the separate $45,000 pension, this son of a bitch is going to make about $150,000 a year. He gets... And he's getting this for life. For life. Now, the reason why this this kind of pissed off the person that sent me the story. And, of course, I'm not going to name names. But um, she said her sister was diagnosed with Lou Gehrig's disease about a year and a half before she died. And uh, apparently she, w she worked at a place here in town, and I'm not going to name it. Um, she said they pretty much forced her to quit immediately. And, of course, that's a whole other story. She left work and applied for SSI. She had to go through several appeal processes to be approved for SSI, even though there is only one outcome with Lou Gehrig's disease, death. She wasn't approved for SSI nor Medicaid until two months before she died. She'd been bedridden for nearly a year, had a feeding tube for six months before she was approved. The excuse SSI was given her? Her husband made too much money. He's a school teacher. <clears throat> a school teacher. <coughs> Which, as we know, most school teachers make somewhere between, I think, 40 and 60, something like that, depending on how long you've been at the school. Mm -hmm. So you got your average um, average Joe, or, or, or Joe Ladd in this, this case, who has got an honest-to-goodness reason for being disabled, is going to die can't get approved for disability. But then you got this son of a bitch who's been in Congress for 17 years, has ripped the taxpayers off, suddenly he's convicted, he is a felon, and he develops a mood disorder and gets $8,700 a month in disability. I mean, people who did, do get approved for disability might get 5 or 10% of that if they're lucky. Mm -hmm. My mother, who suffers from scleroderma, fought for four years, if I get the timing right, four years to get approved for disability, and I think she finally got it in 1983. And she was only getting, well, you know, Dad passed away two weeks ago, so we've been talking about her finances and all of this stuff. She was, uh, she was only getting like 600 and some odd dollars a month. You know? So... There's definitely. Um, have did, have you ever seen Lou Gehrig's disease? What it will do? Have you? Do you know anybody who's ever had it or anything? Not personally, I. Haven't. My my great grandmother had it, <clears throat> and it is probably one of the worst things I have ever seen in my life. <clears throat> really. And um, oh gosh, I mean really, and it's like they said, you know, the only outcome is is once it's you're death. it's death. I mean that's what's going to happen, and. It is just, it is horrendous that it just, your body is just being eaten away, basically, is what happens. And mm -hmm. it's, like I said, my great-grandmother had it, and I was very young. I mean, I was 10, probably, and <clears throat> I watched her just slowly. I mean, it, like, in six months' time, just take her away. Just go, huh? Just go, gone. And uh, it was, ugh, about to cry now thinking about it, man. It was just horrible. So I, I can't. I can't imagine, you know, it pisses me off to know that this is going on. Mm -hmm. And that's what's wrong with our country. That's yeah. that's what's wrong with this country. Yeah. I mean, we, we would rather spend our time, you know, we're, we're going to spend, potentially, spend billions on bombing Syria, which I couldn't give two shits about. You know, let them take care of themselves. Or... Let the U.N. figure out what the hell to do. But this is not the United States problem. But yet, we're going to, you know, mark my words, 
we're going to we're either going to bomb them or we're going to bomb them and have troops on the ground and we're starting yet a third war in the last 10 years if we do that and not only that but if we do that we're helping the rebels well, the rebels are being assisted by the Taliban, which the Taliban hates. I mean, it's a clusterfuck. Don't even go over there. Stay the hell out of it. Syria's fighting amongst themselves. I know. Uh, it doesn't... <clears throat> you know, at the risk of, of being an isolationist, it doesn't concern us. It just absolutely does not concern us. Now, if it concerns the world, and like I said, the, the U.N., which is about as impotent as a 90-year-old man, if the U.N. decides <clears throat> and the Security Council decides that they need to do something, then fine, do it. But it is not left up to the United States and Great Britain to go in there and take care of this mess. I don't care, you know? We've got bigger problems to worry about. You know, instead of spending billions of dollars over there, how about spending <clears throat> some billion dollars over here to take care of, you know, people out on the street and kids that can't, you know, they, they don't even know where their next meal's coming from. They probably don't even have a place to, to lay their head tonight. I mean, this is absolute fucking bullshit is what it is. I, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but I, I'm, a, I'm a thinker and a wanderer. And I, I just wonder if is a lot of times war will stimulate the economy for a little while, but then there's going to be repercussions from it. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's just, you know, that's the thing. Two years left in the uh, Obama regime, I guess, maybe. Is it or two years or just a year and a half now? Well, the next election is 2016. So two and a half. Two and a half. I can't yeah. do that kind of math. Yeah. Shit. I mean, this is two. Th but, <clears throat> yeah. I mean, they'll start campaigning next year. Next year, right. So, um, they have this war, the economy stimulates for a little while, everything's fine, mm -hmm. new guy comes in, I'm out of here, oh, it's his problem, you know? And I think I think maybe a lot of people see that there won't be another Democratic president, maybe. I don't know. I'm just well, thinking out loud. Republicans aren't going to do any better. Oh, I agree. I mean, really, I, I totally and, agree. And, I mean, I agree with you, you know, the the thing that got us out of the Great Depression was World War II. And then you had the 50s, and everything was great and, and all of this. But then we started going through a decline again. Um, the Korean War didn't help. The Vietnam War sure as hell didn't help. Uh -uh. As I pointed out at lunch today uh, among my friends, I said, since World War II, we haven't won a damn war. I mean, I guess we could consider Kuwait... We, we liberated them from Iraq, and, you know, some sh some argued then that we should have gone in and taken Saddam Hussein out then. I, you know, I don't necessarily – I'm kind of on the fence on that one. Uh, the way I look at that one is Kuwait reached out and said, hey, we need some help. And so we responded. That's right. And, of course, there was a side benefit that, well, if we don't respond, you know, we've got this issue with the oil. Anyway, I do not agree with going into Iraq. We went it. We did that for the wrong reason. Um, anyway, that I mean, that's that's all beside the point. It's just, I guess, <clears throat> what brought all that up is we got bullshit like this, where a politician who's been in in Congress for seventeen years, who was stealing from the taxpayers, gets indicted, goes to prison for two and a half years, and suddenly develops a mood disorder. He's fucking nuts. Whatever, and he's going to get eighty seven hundred dollars. <clears throat> and I mean, it's it was like. He got it, just that quick. And uh, no, he he should not get the eighty seven hundred dollars, and he should not get his partial pension from Congress. On top of that, he won't go into general population. He'll go to Club Med or oh yeah yeah <clears throat> oh so. yeah yeah he he is definitely getting special treatment because of who he is and who his daddy is, and his daddy can take his Rainbow Coalition and shove it up his pandy cast, you know, whatever ass, I mean, as far as I'm concerned. Wow. I thought, you were, I thought you were a rainbow warrior. <sighs> Not in that regard. Okay. I'm with you. Okay. America. <clears throat> America. <laughs> Jesse Jackson's going to be on my doorstep tomorrow. <laughs> mm. Screw him, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, let's see. Well, that sucks. This web page did not want to load. Okay, there we go. Let's see. What do we want to move on to? <clears throat> What's for supper? I'm hungry. Um, should have got me a snack. Yeah, you should have got you a snack. Sorry. Yeah. If somebody wants to bring a snack by the studio, that'd be awesome. That'd be great. You know, uh, Fireside, is it Fireside? Not Fireside, uh, Firehouse Sub. We need two. I don't know what they what they serve. <laughs> just bring something. Just, just bring something. Two separate things. Two, yeah, two separate things and a six pack. Um, a six pack of good craft beer from Publix. That's all we ask, and and we'll be golden. We we might even bring you in and make you a part of the show. Uh, you know, whatever. A shout out. Yeah. We'll <clears> give <throat> you a shout out. You know, hump day. Anyway. <laughs> I love that commercial. I know. I'd Every never... Wednesday morning, <laughs> I look, well, two weeks ago, Cameron looked at me and said, Randy, you know what day is? I said, oh, by hell, I don't know. Uh, the 15th, I don't know. You know. And he went through the whole spell. I had no clue what he was talking about. <laughs> I said, I don't know. It's Wednesday. Come on. You hear me. You know. And I was like, he goes, hump day. And I just started laughing. I just I said, that is too funny. Well, so. not, yeah, he sh- did he go, Randy, Randy, Randy. Come on, Randy. Come on, Randy. Come on, <laughs> yeah. come, come on, tell me. Tell he, me. You he know. kind of did that, <laughs> yeah. So. Chicken wings from Pit Stop? Yeah, I'll take them. I like shit stop wings. Yeah. Sure yeah. do. Yeah, that'll work. <clears throat> okay, let's see here. Blah, blah. Okay, I got to give credit to a friend of mine at work that brought this one up. All right. This is dealing with the Star Wars quote most people get wrong. Luke, I am your father. Yes. You know, most people say, Luke, I am your father. Well, it, it, that's never said in the movie. It actually goes, you know, there. You remember the scene. You know, Luke's out there. He's hanging on, and, and Luke, I mean, uh, and Vader's standing there like this. And the dialogue is Vader says, Obi Wan never told you what happened to your father. And Luke said, He told me enough. He told me you killed him. And then Vader says, No, I am your father. That's the line. He never says, Luke, I am your father. <laughs> uh, but the article goes on to say, So why do so many viewers consistently get it wrong? Perhaps it's because it simply sounds better to say it all together like that, or because it's just easier to deliver all the information in a single sentence rather than relying on a second quoter to feed you Luke's lines. Whatever the case, it's been one of cinema's most common misquotes, <clears throat> along with lines like, Play it again, Sam, from Casablanca, for more than 30 years. And though Star Wars superfans already know this information, it's always worth putting out a reminder to those who are still in the dark because they haven't seen Empire 45 times yet. I've only seen it about four. That's it? Yeah. Every time Spike has it on, I watch. Why? Yeah, you, Nothing's going to change. You don't know that. <laughs> well, it depends You don't on, know what kind of drugs I'm on. <laughs> well, or it depends on which version it happens to be this time. You know, That's true. Which one did, did Lucas get his hands on this one? Uh... Yeah, yep, like like the hyena said, uh, Scotty Beam Me Up was never muttered in any Star Trek shows at all. It wasn't? Mm-mm. No, it was... Uh, it was always two to beam <clears throat> up or That's beam right. me up, but it was never, it was never Scotty, Scotty beam, beam me up. up. It never was that. That's right. What's <clears throat> the, uh, the Casablanca? What was the... Play it again, Sam? It's Sam, play it again, isn't it? You know, I need to... I don't remember. To the Book of Knowledge. Wikipedia? Yeah. <laughs> That's what they say on No Agenda. Consult the Book of Knowledge. Yeah, that's what they do. Um, Well, there's a 2 minute and 33 second dealio that I don't necessarily want to play. <laughs> yeah, I don't. It's not that important. I'm just curious. Oh, wait a minute. Ah, Book of Knowledge. Play It Again Sam is originally a misquotation of Play it, Sam, from the 1942 film Casablanca. So he never said play it again. Apparently, he just said play it. Just, just wanted to hear it the first time, not necessarily. Yeah. The reiteration of it. Th- that's a re-repeat. Re-re. Yeah. If you iterate, you're repeating. If you reiterate, you've done the double repeat. I'm out. I'm not as smart as y'all. You know, it's kind of like a train. Anyway. On the 
road again. Just when I think. I just can't wait. <laughs> you just, you make me so proud. <clears throat> we got a thing at work who, uh, we've got a list. Oh God, I shouldn't say this. Who's the biggest perverts at work? And uh, a I'm lot of people, not, you're, not yet. Hang in there. <laughs> Keep your chin up. And uh, a lot of people think I am, but we've got a girl who is, uh, what's the term? Lebanese, is that the right word? Oh, she's lesbian. I don't mean she. I don't mean she can act. I mean she. She she likes other women's. And <laughs> she's she, one of them there Lebanese. She's Lebanese. <laughs> Lebanese. She's from. She's from the Middle East. No, she likes women. What? <laughs> Pardon me. Are you Lebanese? <laughs> Me too. <laughs> yeah, me too. I, I, I've been lesbian all my life. I mean, <laughs> that's right. So, so she like she'll walk by and do like just these gestures to me, and she'll do stuff like this. Oh shit! She'll do this like she, my head's bobbing on her. It's just, I mean, it's she's 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 a good bit younger than I am. So is I mean, she pretty? In her own way. She okay. Is. Okay. I, I, I think the world of her, man. She works hard and she, okay. she comes to work every day. And Beauty is in is the a, eye of the beholder, right. especially if you're holding her like this. She's anyway. not She's not like the most beautiful woman in the world, but she's a hot dude. I'll just say that. <laughs> 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 so, uh, oh, she's kind of a hot is dude. Is she pretty? She's one hell of a hot dude. She's a hot dude. <laughs> so she. Uh, she does stuff like that, but the funny thing about it is my boss, who is a woman, um, <laughs> she, she'll she turn her head and, like, see something out of the corner, and she'll quit, like, she'll be doing this and just, like, hey, like she's doing something else, or, and so all the time, so finally, I called her ass out in front of everybody. I said, uh, I said, what are you doing? She said, what? What are you talking about? And my boss snaps her head over there. She goes, what are you doing? And so I said, I can't tell you what she was doing. It was that vulgar, but she she was here's what she was doing. She was going like this, going, which people, <laughs> I mean, you think about what, yeah. And I'm like, I mean, it kind of it almost. I was like, holy shit. So I mean, she's way bigger perv than I am. She says stuff all the time. She'll come by. She'll be like, hey, can I sniff that seat? That girl just got out of something. I mean, she <laughs> oh says, my God. yeah. I mean, this girl is like, I mean, th- there's a line being crossed that even I wouldn't cross. <laughs> so. um, and if HR is watching this, I'm a liar. This is for <laughs> entertainment purposes only. Yeah. This is not Randy. This this is uh this is an act. It's this an this act. is a role. That's right. So. <laughs> his his name is uh oh god. What? I'm Donovan and you're yeah. Randy. You're 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 Danger Carlisle or something like that. Or Carlisle <laughs> yes. Danger. <laughs> um Buck Nasty. So uh but anyway, so that's what that's what she she does that stuff all the time. So I call her out on it and she looks and finally, she got caught. And my boss said, that's it. You're at the top of the list. <laughs> Randy, you're second. I was like, yes. <laughs> finally, I've been dethroned. So Wow. Yeah. What's Lebanese. sad is if, if if a customer ever sees that. She wouldn't. She doesn't do it in front of customers. Okay. She's, yeah. She has a, she has a, little, a little bit of couth. A little bit. A couth. Couth. She likes couth. that couthy. Couth. Okay. <laughs> I was making sure what we were talking about. Couth. Couth. Okay. Yeah. So, <clears throat> but it's funny to see her. You just don't see twenty something year old women women do that. So <laughs> she played basketball and she Okay, was, so this is athletic. not dude looks like a lady. This is a lady looks like a dude. Eh, kinda. Okay. That's cool. But she's at a wedding this weekend. She's off this week. Her brother's getting married. She's actually gonna have a dress <laughs> and heels and her hair's gonna be done up and everything. So like the big thing this weekend is is Oh, so she's going in drag. <laughs> yeah, I okay. guess you can call it drag. So. <laughs> she she showed me a picture of her sister's friend. She said, I told her sister to bring her hot friends down to Orlando with us this wedding. She said, I'm going to strap it on and get with it this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Holy you, shit. What do you say to somebody like that? You go, girl. You I go, girl. Yeah. Yeah. Twerk it. <clears throat> I don't know what to say. Twerk? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Twerk <Sorry>. it. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Grind on the pelvis. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I work with a uh, – I mean, we need to film – Everything going on at our job site, buddy. Apparently. There's some characters up oh, there. Wow, that's something. Mm. 
I don't know why I almost died at our Christmas party. I don't know. know. (laughs) Have you got enough life insurance? (laughs) I promise I don't. Oh, goodness. But, anywho. Okay, well, talking about life insurance. This has nothing to do with it, but I could could have figured out a way to segue. Only way to segue. Yeah. yeah. All right, so you know there's there's this thing for several years now about texting and driving. Yes. You, sh- you shouldn't text while driving. I agree. You shouldn't read text while driving. What? They didn't say nothing about reading them. I, no, I, I know, right? <sighs> Rem- remember, you know, generally your eyes are only off the road about five seconds when you're reading the text and you run a stop sign and, you know, and, and your shit is done. Okay? Some, I've got mine where if I'm driving, it'll spit them out and holler, it'll tell me, it'll read it to me. Right. Which, Which is, is not always good because it'll be like, that motherfucker is crazy. <laughs> I do not know what the fuck he is talking about. <laughs> it's like, I have somebody with me, man. Oh, I'm yeah. Like, yeah. You know, the preacher's along. You're taking him over to, you know, whatever. <laughs> it is like. Tell Leanne, you wear the pants of that damn family. And it's like, oh, and this she, shit ain't going to fly. And she's in the vehicle <clears> with Yeah, you. exactly. So. Well, in New Jersey, <clears throat> if it can be proven that you were texting the person that was driving and they have an accident or are involved in an accident, you can now be liable. Get my phone out. Let me see who's got a little bit of money. <laughs> got through my rich friends. Why does that matter? You're you you can be liable. If you text them no, while, I want I'm gonna let them know I'm fixing to be driving down oh, the road. So I'm gonna let them text, text me. Oh, Hell yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. You gotta jump on these opportunities. I know. They're not just for Lebanese. <laughs> I got like two thousand contacts in my phone. Yeah, that's a. I hang around with low rent people. That's what's probably. Yeah. So, well, I mean, clearly. You, I, uh, well, look, <laughs> you're here. <laughs> Not exactly. I didn't say I, I wasn't dedicated. I just said. Uh, I yeah, I know. So anyway, apparently, where this came from is um, there. There was a case. Maybe. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead on this. There was a case. <laughs> I um <clears throat> According to a just released opinion from a New Jersey Court of Appeal, someone who sends a text message to another person can be held liable for a text texting related accident so long as the sender was aware that the message's recipient was behind the wheel. <clears throat> Excuse me. We hold that the sender of a text message can potentially be liable if an accident is caused by texting, but only if the sender knew or had special reason to know that the recipient would view the text while driving and thus be distracted. The court's opinion came out of an earlier texting while driving case. A teenager driving and texting crossed the center line of the road he was on and severely injured a married couple on a motorcycle. The injured couple had already settled with the driver who hit them, but they also sought to charge the girl who sent the driver a message with negligence. Now, she didn't send a message with negligence. They wanted to charge her with negligence. Okay, well, you got that straight, right? You with me? No, say it one more time. They wanted to charge the girl with negligence for sending the text. Is that them skimpy clothes? No, not (laughs) negligee. I get confused. It depends on what she looks like. I mean, if she if she's an awesome looking dude, then I don't want her to be wearing negligee. Okay. <clears throat> anyway, um, see, you didn't got me sidetracked. <laughs> However, in this case, the plaintiffs were weren't able to prove that the girl sending the text to her boyfriend actually knew he was driving, so she isn't being charged. However, the court found the argument intriguing enough that it will consider the responsibility of the sender in text message accident cases going forward. We affirm the trial court's order dismissing plaintiff's complaint against the sender of the text messages, but we do not adopt the trial court's reasoning that a remote texter does not have a legal duty to avoid sending text messages to who is driving. Essentially, what they're saying is it's not law, but they are actually going to allow it if it comes up during uh, the finding or what have you. If if they can prove in a texting accident in New Jersey that the person who sent the text was aware that the person who received the text and 
uh, they were aware they were driving when they received the text and there was an accident, then they're just as liable as the person who received the text. Follow me? That's too, that's too complicated. That's... Well, I don't think there, I, I don't believe it'll ever get any kind of traction simply because, well, how are you going to prove it? Well, yeah. I didn't, I mean, it's you, just like this. You can't prove intent. She probably knew that her boyfriend was driving, but is she actually going to say, well, yeah, I knew he was driving. Well, ma'am, why did you send him a text? It was for him to look at when he got... It was for him to look at later. I mean, it's I, I'm when, not responsible for when he reads the text. When he got into the ditch, he was supposed to look at it. I know. When he ran over the couple on the motorcycle, <laughs> he should have gotten out of the car, stood beside it, and read the text. Like, be careful. Don't run over anybody on motorcycles. I mean... I know, right? Or maybe the people on the motorcycle should kind of get over on the other side of the... That's so bad. That is me? awful. That's, that's just, terrible. That's just going that is so bad. I mean, that's <laughs> that's fucked up. <laughs> that is. What the... <laughs> my, uh... Oh, yeah, that's what I need. What the fuck? My wife says that's why it rains. It rained at our wedding right there. It's because of some of the shit I say sometimes. <laughs> uh, I, I'm, I don't, I've probably said this on the show before. When we were having my daughter... Like I was, I've said we, so. I was in there. That doesn't mean you did anything. I didn't. I sat there and watched the Golf Channel like the whole time, like freaked out. Were you actually in the delivery room? Yeah, I was in there three times. I saw some things that I just I don't know if I can ever. I speak know about what again. has been what has been seen cannot be unseen. I actually I I can't remember which one. My wife can probably uh, remind me, but uh, I almost passed out of in one of them. I think it was the second. Maybe it was the last one, and I don't know why. It was just one of these things where everything was going good, and suddenly it was like, whoa. And I knew it wasn't the first one because I've been through this before. Anyway, I'm sorry. I well, I was just going to say that I was just worried that there's going to be something physically wrong with my child uh, whenever. Yeah. And so We'll look at the daddy. <laughs> well, <you know. laughs> if he's out there, I'd appreciate it if he'd yeah. give me some money because I'm taking care of him. Yeah, I know. I'm doing an okay job, even though my wife's pissed like you haven't been home any this week. <laughs> I know. You've been here three nights. I know. What guess, the fuck, dude? And guess what? I'm going to the football game tomorrow night. <laughs> <laughs> You're more than welcome to go. But Oh. Well, I can say that my wife has been very, very lovely this this week. At five o'clock every every day, Tuesday, Wednesday, and today, she comes out here. She turns the lights on in the studio. She brings the temperature down. In two of the three days, I had coffee waiting when I got home. She had to tighten up. That third day, we just can't have. I know. Here. I mean, I got home today, and the damn trash thing wasn't moved. Oh I didn't gosh. have any fucking coffee. I mean, to trade her in. You know, I walked in. I'm like, you know, I almost went. What the fuck? But I didn't. So, <laughs> she. Uh... But no, she's she's been fantastic. I. I don't deserve her. I don't know what that. She's up to something. I'm pretty sure she's up <laughs> to something. She? Yeah. There's. I'm not sure I'm gonna like it. Oh, uh, I'm. Look, she's probably up to being awesome. Well, she's always awesome. Oh, okay. Okay. She. I guess she's trying to be up to being <laughs> awesomer. Maybe. Awesomer. Awesomer. Uh, anyway. I'm all right. Awesomer. Yeah. I can drive. Honey, that's code. I'm not going to text. <laughs> Honey, that's code. Open the wine now. <laughs> Anyway, um, it's probably too late. She's probably ahead of you, buddy. Nah, well, that's okay. Well, I, I don't need it for me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> brown chicken, brown cow. <laughs> okay, so enough about texting and sexting and all that bullshit. <laughs> said sexting. Text, sex. I got you all worked up talking about these uh, main pretty Lebanese, didn't I? I know, right? And, and strap ons and all of that. <laughs> well, talking about sex. Let's talk about sex, baby. Let's talk about you and... No, not no, you. No, that's me. creepy. No, that's, that's just... No. Mm-mm. Let's I talk... Was, <laughs> I was almost a webcam whore. Not me. I'm <clears> trying <throat> to be. This is an article off Start of... I'm peeling this shit off right now. You better watch <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Next thing you know, we're going to be twerking on the damn camera. <laughs> oh, let's hope not. Holy God. No, no, no. All right, this is off of a website called uh, Colonel Mag. Uh, I'd never heard of this, but <laughs> have you ever heard of a site called Chatterbait? <laughs> Sounds <clears throat> perverse a little bit. Chatterbait. C-H-A-T-U-R-B-A-T-E. Let your mind wander. Okay, anyway, enough wondering. 
<laughs> Come back, Randy. Don't go there. Um, in his continuing mission to find a well-paid casual job on the Internet, Jeremy Wilson is reduced to turning tricks on webcamming service Chatterbait. But how far will he go for a bit of spare change? <clears throat> All right, this dude's got a beard, kind of like mine, except I think a little thicker. <clears throat> so uh, here's what he says. This is the reason why I had to bring this one up. I love this. <laughs> I'm pumped. Sometimes an idea is just so ridiculous that you really have no choice but to follow through with it. This is especially true for money-making schemes, and it is the reason that last night I found myself... <clears throat> Damn my voice. I found myself whoring out my beard for cash on a webcam. It I don't was... like where this is going already. <laughs> no, no, no. It was the alignment of two stars that convinced me to try my hand at camming. First, I had learned in an article by my colleague, James Cook, about Chatterbait, a website which allows regular Joes to solicit tips by quote-unquote performing in front of a webcam. Second was my recent experience on Reddit, which had given me the taste for webcamming. webcamming. Over 40,000 people turned into a live stream to watch me hiccup. <clears throat> Many of the live stream viewers complimented me on the quality of my beard. Perhaps I thought I could turn this beard appreciation into tips on chatterbait. All right, so <clears throat> he signs up. He said the process was uh, disconcertingly easy. You select a username and a password, tick a couple of boxes that you're presented with in a broadcast yourself option. He clicks it. As he put, put it, I could get down and dirty straight away but I had to submit verification in order to receive tips. Almost came to my nose. <laughs> I duly dispatched a makeup-free selfie holding my passport next to my face. It was starting to feel like a casting couch audition, and the nerves were kicking in. And I've seen some of those casting couch auditions on, on porn. They don't end well. Oh, well, one of them it does. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well. And, and, you know, you have to wonder about it. As a, as a side note here. How many people are so fucking stupid that they're walking into this supposed porno casting thing? They haven't seen it enough online to know that, honey, you aren't getting casted in anything except this 10-minute snippet that's going up on you porn. Okay? You're about to get a facial, and you're not getting paid. Does that come with a petty manny? Well, it could. <clears throat> All right, so anyway. But a minute later, my verification had been accepted. I was officially a virtual prostitute. Two clicks, and I had set up a room called Beard and Hiccup Lover's Room. Tip one token, and I'll fluff my beard for you. And literally, he's fluffing. We're, th there's no code hey, here. I'm, I'm sure. That does not shock me, man. No code. Well, think about it. 40,000 live stream views just for somebody to watch him hiccup? Jesus Christ, man. Okay. So 10 minutes went by and nothing happened. No one wanted to watch him hiccup or play with his beard or whatever. A user called uh, Crazy Dina, 36-year-old female from Rio de Janeiro, stopped by to watch for a minute and then they left. <clears throat> he said the dread started to creep in. Maybe no one actually liked my beard and secretly laughed about it behind my back. Maybe I should wear my hair down. Maybe I should just maybe I was just plain unattractive. I'd been reduced to the sum of my looks, and it sucked. And then it happened. Sarah Parker. Hi, baby. Lovely beard. A user called Sarah Parker, a 23-year-old female from Paran Parana, Brazil. Anyway, from Brazil. wonder if she's had a Brazilian. Anyway, was chatting to me. <clears throat> me. Thanks. Are you into beards? Sarah Parker. Show more of you, baby? The beard makes me so wet. Me. Well, nice to hear. Sarah, I'm so wet here. Show me your cock. Is it hairy, too? <laughs> Crap! I hadn't considered that people might want more than my beard. I couldn't show myself now. I wasn't exactly in the most aroused state. In fact, how anyone could be aroused doing this beats me. And what if someone records it and I end up on gay boy tube as bearded man strokes limp dick? <laughs> I hadn't thought this through. <laughs> oh, okay. So he goes on and um, uh, it says, um, he says, um, 
it uh, it has beard like qualities. Do you want a close up? And Sarah says, Yeah. And then he says, Well, how was that? She goes, Show me more. Show me your chest. He said, The beard's not enough for you. She says, I want to see your cock. I love Harry Cox. And he says, uh, This is more of a beard show. <clears throat> she says, You don't show. She does a, a sad face, and then she leaves. So he says, this wasn't the first time a girl has experienced a wave of anti-climax with me, but this virtual interaction hurt more than it should. Sarah Parker left the room. I thought about stopping, but the rush from the conversation kept me going. I wanted more attention, and I was determined to get a token. Maybe next time I would offer to show a nipple. Quarter of an hour dragged by, started soul-searching, began thinking through all the terrible life decisions that had led me to this moment. The introspection was broken when I noticed that Braz Cocker, a 43-year-old male from Rio de Janeiro, had been hanging out in my room for, for a few minutes. I was proving to be quite the Latino bait. Feeling desperate, I threw caution to the wind and went and sent Braz Cocker a private message. You like the beard? Radio silence. What was Braz Cocker doing? I was just about to give up when I got a reply. Super sexy. I said, do you want me to stroke it for you? He replies, yes, please. Hot man. But please, keep your hairy face on the cam, too. Already playing? And my response was, um, I meant stroke my beard. This is awkward. <laughs> Braz Cocker left, and I sat in silence. As newcomers to my room, 52 nail, a uh, 20, 20 year old female from Madrid, and another anonymous user quietly looked on. I waited patiently. Surely a beard-loving sugar mama or daddy would come along with a big tip. Eventually, Cool First Five, an 18-year-old male from Islamabad, and Glue Stick, a 46-year-old male from Quebec, entered the room and started chatting. <clears throat> cool First Five. Hey, me. Hi, Cool. Cool First. How are you? Me. I'm good. Just chilling. And you? Awesome. Thank you. What's up? Eh, not much. Me. It's my first time on cam. I thought people liked my beard. Cool first. Yeah, I like it. Glue stick. Sure is thick. Cool first. Are you gonna strip? Me. Do you have any tokens? That's when it happened. I realized I was negotiating with strangers on the internet <laughs> to take off my clothes. And I just couldn't do it. I'm a nice lad from Gloucestershire, and these people, they're all just so direct. I called time. Maybe I'm better suited to Mechanical Turk after all. I just couldn't pass this one by. I mean, this th this would be like something if we tried this. It'd be like, <laughs> I'll stroke my beard. No, I meant this one. <laughs> the other one's clean shaven. Anyway. <laughs> I'd rather see Miley. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right. Are you okay? I have to come clean. I shaved my beard Sunday. Uh oh. Y'all got me. Uh, you know, I, I honestly, the only time I've ever actually done like a clean shave was right before my vasectomy. And they tell you, know, they're like, you, you can't have any hair down there. And I mean, we're talking balls and everything. <laughs> it, it, I'm a little uncomfortable now. I just thought I'd share that with you. You should know. It's like Dr. Evil says on uh, the first Austin Powers movie. There's nothing quite like a freshly scorned scrotum. <laughs> oh, <laughs> God. Like oh, God. <laughs> oh, Lordy, Lordy. Okay, we got to take a break. So we'll, uh, you know, we're going to a commercial here. So we'll, <laughs> we'll be right. <laughs> oh, God. Um, With Amazon Prime, you get instant access to over four movies and TV episodes anytime along with unlimited free two-day shipping on millions of items with no minimum order size. You also get a Kindle book to borrow for free each month from the Kindle Owners Lending Library. Amazon Prime Instant Video is available on a wide range of devices such as the Roku, PS3, Xbox 360, Wii Wii U, and televisions, DVD, and Blu-ray players from Samsung, Panasonic, Sony, LG, and Vizio. Start your 30-day trial today by visiting anero.tv slash prime30. That's anero.tv slash P-R-I-M-E-3-0. After your 30-day trial, the service is $79 per year, and you can cancel at any time. 
I've personally been a Prime member for three years, and for me, it's been one of those services that has the best bang for the buck. Who doesn't like free two-day shipping, plus access to thousands of shows and movies in the comfort of their own home? So check out the 30-day trial of Amazon Prime by visiting our affiliate link at anero.tv slash prime30. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. The relief for all of you is that I am not someone with an important job in broadcasting using this speech to audition for an even more important job in broadcasting. <laughs> House of Cards, creatively, actually follows the model more often employed here in Great Britain. The television industry here has never really embraced the pilot season looked to by the networks in the United States as a worthwhile effort. And now look, of course, we went out to all the major networks with House of Cards and every single one was interested in the idea, but every single one wanted us to do a pilot first. And it, look, it wasn't out of arrogance that David Fincher and Bo Willem and I were not interested in having to audition the idea. It was that we wanted to start to tell a story that would take a long time to tell. We were creating a sophisticated, multi-layered story with complex characters who would reveal themselves over time and relationships that would need space to play out. And the obligation, of course, of doing a pilot, from the writing perspective, is that you have to spend about 45 minutes establishing all the characters and create arbitrary cliffhangers and basically generally prove that what you're setting out to do is going to work. Netflix was the only network that said, we believe in you. We've run our data, and it tells us that our audience would watch the series. We don't need you to do a pilot. By comparison, last year, 113 pilots were made. 35 of those were chosen to go to air. 13 of those were renewed, but most of those are gone now. And this year, 146 pilots were shot. 56 have gone to series, but we don't know the outcome of those yet. But the cost of these pilots was somewhere between 300 and 400 million dollars a year. That makes our House of Cards deal for two seasons look really cost effective. Clearly the success of the Netflix model, releasing the entire season of House of Cards at once, proved one thing. The audience wants the control. They want the freedom. If they want to binge, as they've been doing on House of Cards and lots of other shows, then we should let them binge. I mean, I can't tell you how many people have stopped me on the street and said, thanks, you suck three days out of my life. <laughs> and through this new form of distribution, we have demonstrated that we have learned the lesson that the music industry didn't learn. Give people what they want, when they want it, in the form they want it in, at a reasonable price, and they'll more likely pay for it rather than steal it. Well, some will still steal it, but <laughs> I think we can take a bite out of piracy. So I predict that in the next decade or two, any differentiation between these platforms will fall away. Is 13 hours watched as one cinematic whole really any different than a film? Do we define film as being something two hours or less? Surely it, it goes deeper than that. If you're watching a film on your television, is it no longer a film because you're not watching it in a the theater? If you watch TV show on your iPad, is it no longer a TV show? The device and the length are irrelevant. The labels are useless, except perhaps to agents and managers and lawyers who use these labels to conduct business deals. But for kids growing up now, there's no difference watching Avatar on an iPad, or watching YouTube on a TV, or watching Game of Thrones on their computer. It's all content. It's just story. And the audience has spoken. They want stories. They're dying for them. They're rooting for us to give them the right thing. And they will talk about it, binge on it, carry it with them on the bus and to the hairdresser, force it on their friends, tweet, blog, Facebook, make fan pages, silly gifs, and God knows what else about it. <laughs> Engage with it with a passion and an intimacy that a blockbuster movie could only dream of. And all we have to do is give it to them. The prize fruit is right there, shinier and juicier than it's ever been before. So it will be all the more shame on each and every one of us if we don't reach out and seize it. And I want to leave you with the words of a man as good as any to address the nexus of commerce and art, Mr. Orson Welles, who once said, 
I hate television. I hate it as much as peanuts. But I just can't stop eating peanuts. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay, all right. Well, that was a very good speech from Kevin Spacey. Um, he was at some shindig over in Great Britain, and uh, he's a... You know, people used to think that Obama, Obama, was a very good speaker. And as has been discovered, he can't speak worth a shit if his teleprompter's not working. Kevin, on the other hand, now granted, he had teleprompters, but I never wa I mean, th this is a video, which that was just the audio of it. I never saw him actually look at the teleprompters because <clears throat> they had them on both sides. So, And he's absolutely right. If the media companies will give us what we want in the formats that we want it at a reasonable price, we won't steal the shit. You know? That's the reason why Game of Thrones is the most widely pirated show of all time is because if you don't have a HBO, which is just absolutely ridiculous at $17, $18 a month, well, if you don't have that, then you can't get HBO Go. And then they wait damn near a year, or at least they did for season one, before they make it available um, for sale. And and uh, I think you could get it through iTunes. I'm not sure. But... I'm telling you right now, <clears throat> if I had seen Game of Thrones, if I could have went and rented it and got caught up without... Ha I mean, if I didn't have HBO. I mean, mm -hmm. I, obviously, I had HBO downloaded it all. and but um, if You were I using Go. Yeah. Yeah. Using Go on demand, HBO on demand, whatever. Yeah. If I didn't have that and I had seen Game of Thrones... Mm -hmm. I would have subscribed to HBO to watch it when it come out. Right. There's no doubt. I mean. Right. Um, well, I got a friend of mine at work that, <clears throat> that that's actually what I told her to do. That right now, for, for a lot of us, HBO's only got two good shows, Game of Thrones and um, uh, True Blood. Blood. All right. True Blood, is, of course, is now over. So what she, I told her, I said, Unsubscribe from HBO until next year, around April, right before Game of Thrones fires back up. Because I said, is there anything else on there that you watch? And she's like, no. I said, unsubscribe. All right. Then when you get subscribed for those months, April through, you know, July, pay, pays you money, and then drop it again. And, uh, and do it that way. And she's like, yeah, I think that's what I'll do. That's what, that's what we're going to do. As soon as newsrooms over, I watch newsroom too. Oh uh, yeah, well, I haven't even gotten started on the first Speaking season of that yet. Speaking of, uh, did you get your Chromecast? I did. Uh oh, you don't like it? I'm not impressed with it. Really? Yeah. I'm. I mean, and maybe I'm just missing <clears throat> something, but um, you know, it the the setup was not difficult at all. Okay. Uh, you have to set it up with a wireless device is the first thing. What you do is you take it, you plug it into your TV. If you've got a newer TV that's actually got a USB plug on it that will do power, then you got a little dongle that comes out and plugs into that. Otherwise, you said little dongle. I know, right? <laughs> okay. And I've been looking in the mirror again. But um, <clears throat> Or you go down to a standard USB brick type thing. All right, so I did that. Now, granted, I ran out of HDMI ports, so I had to actually disconnect my Roku and hook it in. Um. So I followed the instructions, so I went to my desktop PC, and I was going to go through the uh, installation. Well, I couldn't find it. And uh, so I had to take my phone, my S4 here, and run the application and set it up that way. Now, once it's set up, you can install, you, you can install the, um, the extension on a desktop PC, and then you can, do, you can share like a, a Chrome tab or whatever to it. Um, I I um I Chromecast a video off of YouTube. I Chromecast a video off of Netflix, and I decided that that's the same shit that I can do on my Apple TV. Except I don't even I don't even AirPlay to my Apple TV. I just go to Netflix, select what I want, and I'm like, I guess maybe if I had like a, a seven inch Nexus or a ten inch or something like that, and I've got a because I was talking to my boss and he's like, I use AirPlay all the time. He said I don't navigate those damn menus in, in the Apple TV, and I said, Well, that's where I'm different. I will navigate through the menus. Um, 
And and I guess part of the reason for that was early, early on, the, the Wi-Fi in the living room sucked. So then we put an access point in there. Everything was better. Well, once I got the S4, this thing won't stay connected to that <clears throat> access point. It'll stay connected to the, the Cisco one that we have in the computer room, but it won't stay connected to the other one. I disconnect it. I don't have an issue with this just falling off of Wi-Fi and going to 3G or 4G. So now that that one in the living room is actually turned off, the Chromecast has trouble connecting to a Wi-Fi signal. So if I'm going to continue to use the damn thing, i got to move the, the access point out of the compu computer room and put it in um, the living room. So I guess long story short, I'm I'm underwhelmed. I, I don't I mean, yeah, it was thirty five bucks <clears throat> and like I I was talking to my friends at work today or we were at lunch and I said if this damn thing had been around a hundred bucks, they wouldn't have sold them like they did. It was the fact that it was thirty five dollars plus three months free of Netflix, which you know, if you didn't get you didn't get it in the first two days, you didn't get the three three months of Netflix. I'm not saying it's bad technology. I think it's I think it's like with pretty much what everything Google does. They start off with an idea. It's a work in progress. And then they flesh it out because they've got an they've got a uh, an SDK that developers can use to to uh you know add the ability to hit the button and send stuff to Chromecast and all of that in their apps and eventually that technology is probably going to get embedded in televisions, things like that. Um so I mean, I'm not disappointed that I that I bought it. I mean, it's it's just one more little gadget that I add to my <clears throat> repertoire of, of gadgets to talk about. But <clears throat> Dang, I'm sorry. It's not anything that I was just like, oh, this is fantastic. No, sorry. Not really. So. Okay. Well. There you have it. We are I'm Martians. Pardon me? We're Martians. We are Martians. We are Martians. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> No, not farmers. <laughs> We're Martians. Whatever. Uh, this is actually off of NBC News. A friend of mine sent it to me. It says, A controversial hypothesis contends that life on our planet had to get, <clears throat> had to get its start elsewhere, most likely on Mars, because the chemistry on early Earth couldn't have provided the required molecular machinery. Stephen Benner, a chemist at the Florida-based Foundation for Applied Molecular Evolution, stated the evidence seems to be building that we are actually all Martians, that life started on Mars and came to Earth on a rock. So, and, what's right. more, recent studies suggest that the conditions suitable for the origin of life may still exist on Mars. Scientists have long debated the idea that life got its start somewhere else in the universe and then was transported to Earth on meteorites or comets, an idea known as, and I meant to look this up, panspermia? Pardon me? Panspermia? Pan panspermia? Yeah, pa no, not <clears throat> panspermia. I prefer her pants off. P-A-N, I'll tell her that. P-A-N-S-P-E-R-M-I-A. -E anyway, um... Benner laid out an unusually detailed case for this involving early Mars and Earth. It says, for years, scientists have been saying that although present-day Mars is an inhospitable place, it was much more habitable billions of years ago. The findings from NASA's Curiosity rover on Mars have added fresh support to such claims. I know, right? I mean, just a few billion years ago, you could, I mean, I don't understand what all the fuss is about, right? I bet they had Google Chromecast back then. Yeah, they probably did, and it worked. Yeah. Probably did. Probably did. Yeah, Dragon <laughs> Con. Dragon Con is this weekend, and I'm unfortunately I'm not going. That would be awesome, though. That'd be something to come back and talk about. But you got me too damn busy with these freaking podcasts. I can't go anywhere. <clears throat> anyway, look, hey, just because your wife wears the pants in the family, don't act like I, you. I know, I know, but I do help her get into them. <clears throat> And I don't. <laughs> All right. It says the early environment on Earth, however, was challenging to the rise of life as we know it, at least in Benner's view. One of the biggest challenges has to do with the process by which organic molecules gave rise to life's chemical building blocks, RNA, DNA, and proteins. If left to themselves, adding energy to organic molecules just tends to turn them into tar or an oily substance. Hmm, maybe that's what we're burning in our cars now. 
That's what Benner calls the tar paradox. How could organic materials ever give rise to biopolymers like DNA? So, of course, you know, there's some people out there It's like, well, we really can't get behind this, but... You know, my dad always pretty much felt like that... And, and, I, and to this point, I, I somewhat agree. I don't believe that we actually originated on this planet. You know... You know my religious stance. So anyway, even scientifically, I don't believe we originated on that. We were either colonized or something like this happened. We were seated here. <clears throat> now, he had a his theory was that what is now known as the asteroid belt was at one time a planet and something happened. The planet blew up, which affected Mars, and we had to vacate Mars and Earth was the closest place for us to get to, which is the reason why Mars now has limited atmosphere, whereas before <coughs> it would have had a different atmosphere. Maybe whatever whatever the asteroid belt was pulled away part of that. I don't know. Not getting into the whole scientific side of it. But, you know, as far as science fiction goes, it's a pretty cool theory. <laughs> Scientists would go, you are a fucking moron. But that's okay. Thought it was kind of cool. That is. There's some cool ability to that. So, in essence, we are Martians. Bum, da, dum, dum, dum. <laughs> that's what goes through my head when <laughs> I know, right? Okay, that's show title. I we like it. Are Martians. Bum, 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 bum. Damn you. Now every time that commercial's come come on, I'm all around. <laughs> we are Martians. <laughs> and my family's gonna look at me like What is wrong with you? What the hell is wrong with you? You're never here. You're hollering at weird shit. I know. So Martians are morons. <clears throat> that's it. We are Martians, dot, 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 or morons. Uh, I got two more stories, but we're already pushing for time, so I'm going to maybe leave these for uh, next week. Why, certainly. Yeah. You got anything that you'd like to allow before I get to the uh, joke of the show? <laughs> it's a cutie. I, I, I'm going to tell a joke before. Okay. I'm going to give my joke of the show. Okay. Um, Yeah, it's a joke. Hold on, let me let me make sure I got it right. No, it's easy. I, I don't know. Have you have you heard about these new corduroy pillow slips? Mm, no. Well, they're making headlines. So <laughs> they're making headlines when you lay on them. That shit is funny. That is awesome. <laughs> what? Oh my god. Oh, have you heard about the new corduroy pillow slips? Yeah. Well, they're making headlines. <laughs> <laughs> No. I got the slide whistle? That's you got, what I, yeah, that's all you're getting. Sorry. Oh, my rod. That is Godzilla. <laughs> that is, that's gold. Mm, okay. Right, now let's, for a, let's hear a real joke. For a real joke. A little boy and a girl are walking along, and suddenly the boy stops and proclaims, Look at what I have, as he pulls down his pants and allows the girl to observe. Do you have one, he asks. The girl is confused and upset that she doesn't seem she does seem to be lacking what the boy has. Distraught, she runs home to her mother, who sees her daughter crying. What's wrong? asks the mother. The daughter tells her mother about the situation, and when she's done, her mother smiles and whispers in her ear. The next day, the boy and the girl are walking down the same path. The boy notices that the girl is smiling even more than she than he is, more than she usually is, and he demands to know why. The girl turns to him, pulls up her skirt, and says, My mom says as long as I have one of these, I can get as many of those as I want. <laughs> Slide whistle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Nope. That's a rim shot. All right. <laughs> Well, anyway, well, that's it. That's the end of this show. We're going to get out of here. We do appreciate you joining us as uh, we do this show every Thursday at 7 p.m. Usually try to start a pre-show around 6.30 or whatever, but the show starts around 7 o'clock. Um, if you want to call and leave us a voicemail to uh, talk about anything that we've talked about on the show, you can call us at 313-718-2557. Or you can send an email to dnr at anero.tv. So, with that said, we're going to get out of here because I'm hungry. And um, we'll see you next week.
here has been a production of the Narrow Media Network. Your reality, distorted. For other great shows, be sure to check out Anero.tv.